No. We are. We are now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hang on one second. We're so teeny again. <laughs> Why are we so teeny? I don't know. We're so small. Here we go. Let's get small. There we go. There's a Steve, uh, Steve, Steve Martin bit. <laughs> Let's get small. Remember that? Hi there. It's us. Hi. Dina. Jimmy. And uh, we've got our sign here that uh, Amy Fernandez made for us. Yeah. We went to see them tonight, Ray and Amy. Nice people. Yeah, we had a really good time, too. We ate pizza, and Dana drank wine, and Amy drank wine, and we had fun. Good conversation with good friends, and it was it was fun. It was. So, welcome to episode three. Three. Mm-hmm. Three. Everything's backwards. Welcome to ep- episode three of This Is Us. If you remember, well, I guess uh, we should say hi to the folks, and we hope everybody's doing okay. Should we do that first? Yeah. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. We hope everybody's okay. This is episode three and uh, of This Is Us, and the last time we left you, we were talking about Kim and Doug being in the band, and they left the band because we asked them to. We left the band. They actually didn't leave the band. We left the band and took the name with us. <laughs> yes. I think that's the way it was. Yeah. Yes. That's yes. the way it was. That's the way it was. And we were telling you about some people named Marty and Stefan Mike. and Mike. Aaron. Aaron and us. Yeah. Mike and Marty were cousins. And that's how they came up with the name Cousin. For their band, K U Z Y M, they were a really good band. They yeah. were a really good band. We they used to go good. to listen to them all the time when we weren't playing. We did, and uh, boy, they were good. Uh, nice harmonies, great instrumentals, uh, good writing. Uh, their, their writing was pretty amazing. I think it was mainly Marty and Mike mm-hmm. that did the writing of the original material, and uh, they had a CD's worth of songs. And one of the things Dina and I have always wanted to do was do more writing and do some originals. And for whatever reason, the people that we played with just didn't want to do that. They wanted to go out and do cover songs and uh, have a good time with our buddies and go into (coughs) establishments and play. And they had no desire to do originals whatsoever. And we did. We did an original song with, with them, but we merged as Sidewinder. And the song was called You're the One. And we recorded it at Mr. Small's. Yes, we did. That was that was nice. But was that not a cousin's song that we redid? It it was, yeah. Yeah, yes. So it was a cousin's song that we redid at Mr. Small's. And Isaac was doing a project. Isaiah. Isaiah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it began with an I. Come on, give me some credit. Um, I, I feel like I'm like not in the picture here. Isaiah, ladies and gentlemen, uh, was our sound man uh, for a long time, and he was, uh, what was he, an apprentice at Mr. Smalls? At or? the time, yeah. He was he was studying sound and how to run sound for bands, engineering, things like that, yeah. And one of his projects, kind of like... Um, when you're in college and you have to do like your last thesis kind of thing, what he had to do was he had to have a band and record one of their songs using his techniques that he had learned and putting his own um, technique to it as well. And so he asked us, because we knew him from a place of work where we were working full time, Jimmy and, and I together, he worked with us there. And um, so he knew we had a band, and he asked if we would be interested in that. He wasn't running sound for us then? He was. He was running sound for us, but how we met him, I'm sorry, how we met him was because... Of where we worked. Of where we worked. We knew him from our work. And then we found out that he was going to school to run sound, and we said, hey, we have a band. you want to get some experience? Do you want to run sound for us? But that was after Mario, Correct. Mario ran sound for us, and Earl ran lights for us, and then Isaiah came into I the picture so. a little bit later. I think so, yeah, yeah. Okay, anyway. Uh, so it, many it, people. <laughs> it's like having a family tree, you know? <laughs> yeah. it, it really is. Like, there's just like 
so many branches and so many different directions and uh, everything of this Sidewinder band. Okay, so uh, if you don't remember from last time, from episode two, we decided to merge, Dina and I decided to merge with Cousin, and Cousin didn't really want to use their name. They wanted to use Sidewinder, and we wanted to use Sidewinder too. Uh, so we were all in agreement with that, so we went on and we just again made another transition, shed our skin once again, and uh, we carried on with the name Sidewinder with uh, Marty, Stefan, Mike, and Aaron, and Dina, and me, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So six people in a band. Yeah, our first show was so much fun. Oh my goodness, it was incredible. Yeah. Incredible. So Dina sang... Mike sang and played guitar. Marty sang and played lead guitar. Well, they kind of like switched off on, on lead. Um, Aaron played keyboards, guitar, harmonica, sang. Anything he could put his hands on, he could play. He's just yeah. one of those people that made me sick in a good way because he was so talented, and I was just so amazed that this 21-year-old this person uh, you know, could play all these instruments. I think he played harmonica too. Yeah, you said that. Yeah. And he sang. Did I say that? Okay. Yeah. And then we had Stefan, and Stefan played bass and sang background vocals and a couple couple songs he did lead on, right? Yeah. Am I missing anything? You mean lead singing? A couple songs. Yeah, he sang lead on, on, a, on couple, a couple on a couple yeah. of songs. Yeah. And then, um, so I think in the beginning we ran our own sound and, and lights. We did, yeah. Yeah. And and like Dina said, the first night that we played, it was at the Legion. In Baden. It was at the Baden Legion? No. No, no. Okay, go Not ahead. Not Baden. It was Ambridge. Ambridge. Yeah, well, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I don't know, but for some reason, Baden and Legion just go together. Yeah, for it was the Ambridge Legion, and it was when the Ambridge Legion's bar was in the basement. It was yes. it was so much fun. And it, that it, was the best when it was in the basement. Oh my goodness! It, it was so much. Not fun. that it's not nice now. I mean, they they made it really beautiful, but there was just something about being in that environment. Yeah. That uh, they had a pool table. They had a horseshoe bar. Um, there was a girl named Fenice that was the bar manager. Uh, her and her then boyfriend. I don't think they were married. They weren't at the married time. yet. No. Um, Dave. Dave ran the bar and just good people yeah, it was just great. good people that came everybody had fun and word got around that we had merged and that we were going to be doing our first gig at the Ambridge Legion and it was just wall to wall people I mean it, it was <laughs> it was packed it's, it's the kind of audience that you want every night when you play it was pre-COVID <laughs> it was pre-COVID <laughs> very pre-COVID <clears throat> nobody wore masks <laughs> and there was no uh, six foot separation and all that not at all there it was there was not room for that with how many people there were my goodness and I think Tom Messner came that he night he did didn't. yeah Tom Messner who we had just met I think that night he was good friends with Marty and uh, he heard about it so he came down and excellent photographer Tom is a band person, and when I say that, I mean Tom likes to go and hear bands, he likes to take pictures of bands, he likes to video bands, he likes to become part, part of band, the, bar, the band history uh, of like the area, Butler, Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. uh, Beaver County, and he's just such a great a friend of bands. He has a thing called Tom's Band List on Facebook. And if you go there, he does this all on his own. He finds out where people are playing, and he makes a list of where everybody's playing in Butler, in Beaver County, in Pittsburgh. And I think he puts them in alphabetical order. Uh, but I mean, just the work that he puts into yeah. to, to his photography and his recordings and everything he does, his YouTube. He's just an amazing guy, and we consider him a very good friend. And, Tom, thank you for all that you have done for Sidewinder and for us. Thanks, so, Tom. anyway, we, we played 
the Legion that night, and yeah. how did it go? It was great. Uh, it was really fun. It was, like Jimmy said, there were so many people. It was packed. The dance floor was full the whole night. Everybody was having a good time, and um, gosh, it was, it was fun. Marty, at the time, he used to get up on the bar with his guitar. <clears throat> so he was up on the bar with his guitar, and uh, I think our last song that we did that he got up on the bar for was Be My Girl by Jet. That was our last song. That was our last song. Yeah. It was so much fun. I, I just, I can't stress it enough. It was so much fun. Yeah, Marty used to get up on the bar, and he would walk the bar. Dina would go out into the audience, and she would sing in the audience. Yeah. A lot of audience participation. Yeah. And that's what I think made it so much fun was I because would, we got everybody involved. And Nalia and JR and JR's mom was always there. Yes, yeah. And yeah. JR's mom loved Marty and she loved the band and she was always dancing. It was fun. It was it was fun, yes, yes it was. She had a good time. Everybody had a good mama. time. Mama. Uh yes, mama. Yeah. Just a, a, a little sweet little old lady and she she was just so much fun. Everybody it, yeah. it was if I could play like that Every night, I would be happy, seriously, because it, it was just, it was just such a good time, and everybody got along. There, there were no fights. There was no bickering. Everybody that, that was in the in the place that night just came, and had fun. It was all about having fun. Yeah. So that went on for quite a while um, with them, and um, then eventually. Mike left the band. I'm trying to think of some of the places well, no, we Aaron played. Aaron left the band Aaron first. Aaron left the band first. And the reason Aaron left the band is because he was dating somebody at the time. And it was, and he, I think he was going to school, to college. Didn't he, yeah, he went to Slippery. Was it Slippery Rock? Or, I'm not sure. I don't sure. know. But anyway, he was busy with there. school and his girlfriend and he trying to find that balance yeah. and stuff like that. Because he was young. He was really so, a good musician, though. Yeah, so that was kind of sad when he left because he brought a lot to the band. And then we went on with Marty, Mike, and Stefan, and Jimmy and, and me. And that was really fun as well. I mean, we you know, we were able to to continue to make it work without the keyboards. Well, we, we like Marty that. started playing keyboards. Oh, yeah, then Marty started playing keyboards because Marty knew how to play a lot of different instruments as well. Yes, he did. And... Uh, we went that way for a really long time, and then Mike left the band. Yeah, so we used to play a lot of outdoor venues. We did Manaka Community Days when it was still up on uh, the hill mm -hmm. at Jack Antoline Park. Uh, we did Manaka Community Days. My goodness, we still do it uh, when yeah. COVID's not around. Right. Uh, you know, we were the headliners um, for three years in a row. The year before last, which 2019, 2018, and 2017, I do believe. And we probably would have been there last year, too, had it not been for COVID, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's always a good time. We yeah. love being over in Manaka for Manaka Community Days. And uh, they've incorporated it now with the Beaver County Boom. So excellent fireworks afterwards. And all of Beaver County, oh, I shouldn't say all of Beaver County, well, all of Beaver County turns out for it, I would say, either on the Rochester side or the Manaka side. Uh, they've got music going on on both sides of the river, and uh, just thousands upon thousands of people come out for the fireworks and for all the festivities. And it's what makes music fun. It really does. One of the things I've always said about music is, and this is my personal feeling. Uh, nobody has to agree with me, and a lot of people don't, but my idea of playing music is if I can make one person, if I can make one person forget their problems and their stress for five minutes, ten minutes, then I've accomplished what I want to do. Yeah. It's all it takes. Just forget about all your troubles for five or ten minutes, and I've done my job. That's the way how I. That's how I look at it. Anyway, I didn't get into this business or the music thing to make money, because Lord knows we don't. Uh, didn't really get into it uh, to pick up chicks 
and or anything you know, some people do. Alice Cooper, I think, was uh, one of those people. If I'm not mistaken, from reading about him whenever he got into the music business. Uh, my intentions were always just to make people feel good, have fun, have a good time, and forget their problems. That's my motivation for playing music. Well, plus music made you feel good. So. Plus music makes me feel good, and when the band is clicking, uh, there's nothing like it. I mean, seriously, right. there's nothing like it. When all the band members are getting along and everybody's just firing on all cylinders and you hit that pocket, it just feels so magical. It does, yeah. I miss playing. I'm looking forward to COVID calming down so we can get back out there because what Jimmy's saying is so true. It's so much fun and enjoyable when everybody is all clicking and, you know, we're doing that right now with the band that we're involved in now, Hat Trick. Um, and then, of course, with us because... We always click. <laughs> right? Yes, we do. Yes, <laughs> we do. We do. So, you know, that's going to be fun when we are able to get out there. We talked a little bit about how we started this project and then COVID hit, and we haven't really been able to get out and actually perform in public yet. You know, all of our things have been online, but that'll be coming soon. But anyways, back to the podcast. We did have a lot of fun with that band, Sidewinder at that particular time with those people, with with the people that we were just talking about. It was really fun. Everybody clicked. Um, one of the most amazing things that we did together as a band with those guys was um, we tried out for the X Factor. Everybody remember that show? We tried out for the X Factor at the Pittsburgh audition. Yes, we did. And we made it. Yes, we did. We made it. We were selected the winners of the Pittsburgh X Factor. And with that winning, we were given an all-expense-paid trip to go to Chicago for the next level. And Three days, two nights, I believe. Yeah. And it was, it was great. We could talk about that. Yeah, we'll talk about that in our next podcast. How's that? Well, I don't know. How much time do we have? I don't know. Where are we at? Let's see. i got to put my glasses on. Okay, well, we're 17 minutes in so far. So. All right, well, I'll tell you what. We're going to talk to you about the X Factor now because I don't want to, I don't want to go to till, till the next one because we'll probably have this wrapped up okay. before we got to it. Um, a lot of people want to know how those shows work. And um, basically what happens is we went to an audition in Pittsburgh. We got to the audition, and in Pittsburgh they picked three winners. Okay, there was us. Not us. Sidewinder. Sidewinder. <laughs> With us in it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sidewinder. That's confusing. There was Sidewinder, another, another group, I think, or a duo, and mm -hmm. Maria... Can't remember her last name. Yeah, I don't know. All right, so the the three of us uh, basically all got to go to Chicago. All expenses paid. All expenses paid. Now we didn't know whether we would be able to use our instruments or not. First of all, we go yeah. into the audition. You wonder what the audition's like. Uh, we were auditioning in a church in East Pittsburgh, and beautiful church. And so we get down, and everybody's kind of like talking and doing their thing, and we're like, well. Let's practice because, you know, let, let's make sure that we got the, the, the vocals down, make sure we know what we're doing uh, because we'd only practiced uh, what we were going to be doing like maybe four times, five times. We're, we picked two songs, Medicine and the Beatles song, right? Yeah. Yeah, Nowhere Man. Nowhere Man. So we were going to do Medicine first, and you only have two minutes, so you sing a verse and you sing a chorus, and I, I think that was pretty much it. Mm -hmm. So... We uh, we went down to the front of the church. And well, we were allowed to use our instruments in Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh, we were allowed yeah. to use our instruments. I took a set of bongos, and Marty had a guitar, I think, or Mike had a guitar. Somebody had a guitar. Maybe they both had they guitars. They both did. Okay, they both had guitars. And Stefan had his bass. And Stefan had his bass. Yeah. All right, so anyway, we're, we're in there, and we're practicing, and then everybody else sees us practicing, and they think, 
that might be a good idea. Let's practice. <laughs> so they started practicing too. So the next thing we know, it's our turn to go in. We go in, and I think it was just one lady, right? No, there's three people. There's three judges. I, I, two guys and a woman. My, my memory, my mind is just... Okay, there were two guys and a woman. There were two guys and a woman. And they were sitting in a chair. And I think they were behind some sort of a table or a desk or something. Mm -hmm. And they told us to come in. And we went in and uh, introduced ourselves. And we mm -hmm. talked to them for a minute or so. And that was about it. And they just said, okay, we'll go ahead. And so we did. And we did medicine, and uh, basically, that's we didn't have to do the second song. No. So we didn't have to do the second song, and uh, they they said, "Boy, we, like, they went like this, which made us feel really good." Yeah. And they said, "You know what? We'd, I'd really like to hear more of you guys. You guys are really good." And I don't think they told us right then and there. No, they, they didn't. didn't tell us there. They said, "Okay, well, we'll we'll let you know." It was one of those kind of things. So we said, okay, fine. So then we went out into the hallway, and there were some people there from Channel 53. They were sponsoring the event because the X Factor was on Channel 53. Okay. And so they said, hey, would you guys mind doing a little bit for us? Oh, yeah, yeah. And we said, okay, what do you want us to do? And they said, well, you know how they have TMZ. It's a national show, and they talk about... Uh, you like all all of the celebrities and things like that. Well, we have a show called PMZ for Pittsburgh. So we said, okay, what would you like us to do? And they told us what they wanted us to do, and it was... I forget, but I, I remember it was just like a little clip. It was just like a little clip. You might even have it on, our, on I have it somewhere. computer somewhere. I have it somewhere. If, if I could find it, I'll maybe try to put up a link, although we say that every week and we never do. <laughs> One of these days we'll get around to it. Anyway, uh, so we did this thing for PMZ uh, and th that they asked us to do, and we did that, uh, which was kind of funny. Mike did something weird. I think he stuck his tongue out or, yeah. or something. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and it was fun. It was so they showed that there's a promo. They put it on PMZ, but they also showed it as a promo on Channel 53 for a couple of weeks, which was kind of cool. You know, Sidewinder band. Oh, yeah. It was, like, really late at night, though. I mean, and, you know, we're night owls anyways. Um, some musician friends we know aren't night owls, even though they play music <laughs> when they're not playing music. But we are night owls not only when we're playing music, but even when we're not. I, quite frankly, it's one thirty in the morning, and we're recording this podcast. Um, but... <laughs> we would be laying in bed watching a show or something. And, and that would come on. Like at 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> hey, there we are. Nice. Cool. Yeah, I remember that. Um, so uh, I'll try to make a, a long story a little bit shorter. <clears throat> so we found out we left and we didn't know anything at that point in time about um, who won or, or anything. And a couple of days later, we get a call from Channel 53. They said, hey, we just want to let you know that uh, you're one of the winners of the X Factor Pittsburgh auditions. And uh, if you're able to, we would like to send you to Chicago. Uh, all expenses paid, three days, two nights, and you will audition in Chicago. And you won't have to basically stay in all those long lines and do everything that they have to do because you've already gone through the process once. <clears throat> so we said, yeah, okay. <laughs> They said, the only thing is we need your names, your addresses, your social security numbers, um, your uh, firstborn's name. <laughs> and, and they said, because uh, you're going to have to pay taxes on like the amount of money that you won, uh, and, and et cetera, et cetera. And it was thousands of dollars. So anyway, we said, okay. We figured that divided up five ways would be okay. And everybody agreed to it. So we said, okay. So we decide, okay, we're going to Chicago. We're going to audition for the X Factor at the Sears Center Arena. And we were jazzed. We oh, thought we were, gonna, we, we were so excited. We were going to see Simon Cowell. So we thought. So we thought. Mm -hmm. Didn't work out that way. but We'll tell you that in a second. Anyway, so you can tell them how did we get prepared and how did we go. Oh, <laughs> so we, we have videos of, of ourselves, too. Um practicing but we were told that when we got to Chicago there was a probability that we might not be able to use our instruments so but they weren't sure right they weren't sure 
So we were like, how does that work? We're a band. <laughs> <laughs> we're not like Pentatonix, which is also a band, but they're like completely all vocals a cappella. Very cool. You know, they're very good. Yeah. Uh, uh, we're not a boy band or a girl band where we do dancing with just vocals and then somebody else plays the instruments behind us. I mean, we were a band. So we're thinking, what are we going to do? So we were prepared. We needed to do three songs, so we chose Medicine once again because that's what got us there. We also chose Nowhere Man. And then there was one other song. I can't remember right now what it was, but that doesn't really matter. In any event, we already knew how we were going to do those songs if we were able to play our instruments because we did that all the time at our shows. But how are we going to do it without our instruments? So <laughs> what we figured was that, of course, I sang, so it really wasn't hard for me. But for the guys, everywhere an instrument would be playing, we had to figure out what a vocal part would be for them to interact what their voice would sound like if their voice was the instrument that they were playing. <laughs> It was really strange. We're not pentatonics, believe me. <laughs> so, and it's funny because pentatonics has it all worked out, and it's, it's amazing. I mean, that's just what they do, but that wasn't, like, really our expertise. Or rockapella. Rockapella does kind yeah. of the same thing. So. so we figured it out, and it was it was not bad. It, it was hilarious, is what it was. <laughs> we have videos. <laughs> yeah, we'll see if we can find the videos and put them up. But what we would do is, you know, for those of us that, that weren't singing when Dino was... We were doing that. Um, yeah, they were doing that while I was singing. And she, was, and she would sing the lead, you know, to that uh, as, as best she could without but, laughing. But wait... Marty, I think we talked about this before in a previous podcast. Marty was our musical director, and Marty had a really good ear, and he, he was able to pick out uh, tones and vocals and pitches and everything. So harmonies. harmonies. So he was able to find parts for every guy in the band, <laughs> including himself, as to what it would sound like to do the song without instruments. So, I mean, it wasn't entirely terrible. It really wasn't terrible. Oh, no, terrible. it wasn't. It wasn't. We're, you know, we're laughing about it because it was not what we did. It's not that, what we do. Right. So, yeah, That's was, why we're laughing was... about it. It really wasn't bad at all. So, anyways, we get there. And, I mean, there's a whole story. It could take hours, honestly, to tell you the whole story. It was very surreal, put it that way. Um... We ended up getting out of the main line because, as Jimmy said, we were had already gone through in Pittsburgh. So we had to stand there for a little while until somebody came up into the crowd because um, you have numbers and stuff. And so, I, I just want to interject. Every time we would talk to a producer or somebody that dealt with a show, we would say, when we go in to do our performance, do we talk to the judges? Do we not talk to the judges? What do we do? Every time we got to a different station, they told us something different. Yeah, so that was kind of They would say, difficult. oh, yeah, when you go in, be real friendly. Say, hey, how you guys doing? You know, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and then the next time, oh, whatever you do, don't talk to the judges. They don't want to have any kind of preconceived notion of you or your personalities. Don't do that. Then we'd go to the next station, and they'd say, well, the judges will talk to you, and if they ask you a question, it's okay to talk back to them. So now we asked three different stations the same question and got three different answers. So just, are we allowed to use our instruments? Oh, yeah, you can use your instruments. Oh, no instruments. Well, maybe. Okay, so, I mean, at this point in time, it's like, we're like, what are, yeah. we, what are we going to do? I, it, we, we didn't have a clue. I think they do that on purpose. Yeah, I think so too. Ten thousand people were there. Yeah, ten thousand people. It was people extremely were there. surreal. I I remember sitting in the bleachers, waiting for our call to go in to to uh, audition, and I 
was looking around all of these people. 10,000, as Jimmy said. And I'm thinking to myself, oh my God. Literally. I cannot believe we're here. It, it's just, it was, it was crazy. So, my allergies, you guys, are bothering me tonight. Sorry. Not true. So, anyways, um, long story short, we got in to audition and we didn't get to meet Simon because Simon actually wasn't at this location. And again, nobody tells you that because the stage that we were at, and I don't mean stage as far as performing on stage, I mean the stage based on like the piece of where we were in the audition process, Simon wasn't at this specific audition process part. But they had they had him on screen. He was on screen. He was on screen talking to everybody that was there. Yeah. And, you know, he came on his, you know, it was an image of him. And he said, hello, everyone. I'm Simon Cowell. Uh, sorry I can't be with you today, but we have uh, very good producers and people who will be judging you. And if they put you through to uh, the next spot, then you will be meeting us right. at that point in time. Just want to say good luck, everybody. Have fun. Relax. And hopefully I'll see you in New York or wherever. Yeah. So the next stage after where we were at was where we would have met Simon and the rest of the crew that were judges for the big stage for the TV show. So little did we know at the although, time. Although, even though for the TV show. Right, I was just going to say. Go ahead. No, I, I was just going to say some people were. They did video, and yeah, some of those people I was just gonna say that. were on TV. So, when I say the TV show, I meant the main stage TV show where you actually go on uh, and perform, and, and as a viewer, you watch that person actually perform on the large stage in front of Simon and the other judges. Little did we know we were actually, not just us specifically, but people were being recorded so that those pieces of recordings were being interjected into the show that would come out on television right. at a later date. So, anyways, we finally get into the room where we're supposed to perform, and we did learn prior to going in there that we were not allowed to use our instruments. So we were prepared anyways, because yeah. they you know, told us that that was a good probability. Bummer. So... The guys had to do their vocals. <laughs> Before anything even started, we're standing there, and there's little X spots, and I don't think it was a pun intended, but there was X spots where each person had to stand. I think there were five or six of them, yeah. And we had to stand there for a few minutes. Of course, you're supposed to smile. You don't want to look like a jerk or anything. You know, you're supposed to smile and try to be... You know, look happy and we didn't know what excited, and they were like looking at you up and down. Each person, you know, there's like three judges. Again, it was a woman and two guys, and they're checking each one of us out, looking us up and down. And then the woman says, "Hmm, you all really look like a band." <laughs> How long have you all been... Well, somebody said, we are a band. I think it was Jimmy. It was me. Now, granted, people like Pentatonix and all them, they're bands too, but that is not what she meant, and we could tell in the way that she said it. Yeah. You know, here's me with all these guys, and the guys look like musicians in a band. <laughs> Just by the style and everything that we had, so... We did. We did. We're like... Jimmy goes, yeah, we are a band. And she goes, oh, how long have you all been together? So, you know, Jimmy told the answer and, you know, answered her. And then she's like, okay, you can get started. <laughs> so then they went into, da 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 <laughs> That thing, and I started singing. And I think they cut us off at, like, you know, like a minute in or something like that. And that was it. So then we walked back to... Well, no, 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 no. They, 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 were, they discussed something amongst themselves while we were performing. Maybe you didn't see it because you were into singing. Yeah, and probably like, oh, my God, these guys, what are they doing? <laughs> well, we were doing what we were supposed to do. Uh, so anyway, we, I'm looking at the judges, and the judges are like... <laughs> they're going like that kind of stuff, right? And so, uh, they, like Dina said, they stopped us after a minute, minute and fifteen seconds or whatever. And um, the girl says, <laughs> "You guys are going 
<laughs> yeah, I think we were still snapping our fingers. Yeah. So she says, you know, she goes, honestly, she said, you're really good. And we'd really like to hear more of you. But. It's a no. That's the, that's the word we didn't want to hear. But it has to be, it has to be a no. And the reason why is we're not looking for bands this year. Right. She said, feel free to come back next year if we're looking for bands because you're really good. And that made us feel good. And, uh, you know, it also let us know, hey, we got two days to party. Yeah, because we had uh, a three-day trip. We had a three-day trip, two paid nights for. paid for. Yeah. We figured, okay, well, we came, we did our thing, we oh, know we... that we're out, so... So we told you a little bit earlier that they were filming clips for the main TV show. <laughs> yes. So when the main TV show started, we weren't we weren't filmed, but our van was. We saw our van in the parking lot, which was kind of cool. We had to take a van because of all of our equipment. So we drove equipment up. Equipment and all of us. In the, yeah. and, all, and all of us, yeah, all of us, too. We drove all, up together. There were like five of us in the band, and then we had all of our instruments. <laughs> and so, yeah, we all drove up in the van. <laughs> Do you remember that picture oh that goodness. we snapped before we left Pittsburgh? Yep. And Marty looked like he was a wax. <laughs> he looked like a mannequin looking through the window. <laughs> I don't know why, but it was really late at night, and I guess it was the angle. It was dark. It was, it was He fun. ended up, in this picture, he looked like he was in a wax museum or something. Yes. We all it, laughed it was about funny. It. So we anyway, we, we did get there, and um, so, you know, we knew that we were out. Now, we did see Marie the next morning, and we said, hey, how'd you do? And she says, oh, I got through. And we said, really? She said, yeah. She says, um, I had to stay there for like an hour and a half signing paperwork. I signed my life away. Uh, she said, but yes, I got through, and I'm going to get to go and uh, to the next level and see what happens. And uh, we, we were really happy for her. Now, while we were there... Oh, I know where you're going with some this. Some people were dressed up like clowns. Some people were dressed up like superheroes. <laughs> and there was a guy there that had his hat on. And a cape. And a cape. And he had like a, I don't know, like a brown brown coat and some other stuff. I don't know. So the next day, we, you know, we're talking... He was talking. an older guy, too. He was an older guy. He was an older gentleman, probably 60s, maybe? Yeah. 50s, 60s, whatever. So, the next day we go to, to this Chicago hot dog shop, right? <laughs> and we're, we all get our orders, and we're all over at this table, and we're sitting down, and we're talking about our audition, and we were so happy that Marie went, went through and <laughs> wishing her luck. All of a sudden, this guy comes in. Oh, wait. Well, the guy that came in that you thought... Okay. The guy with the cape that we're talking about had also, he wasn't with our group of Pittsburghers, but he was from another city, and he actually, the guy with the cape and the hat, had actually made it through. Yeah, he got through. He got through. We did hear about that. Yes. So, anyhow, back to the hot dog shop. So, we're at the hot dog shop, and this guy comes walking in. He's got this brown hat on. He's got this sports coat on. Big smile on his face. He's got a young girl on each arm, right? He comes strutting in like a rooster. Got his chest out. <laughs> and I look at him and I say, Hey, man, congratulations! <laughs> and I guess I said it loud enough that the entire Chicago hot dog place heard me. And I think they looked over at him. And I think some of them started clapping, you know. And he gets this big grin on his face, you know. And he just like nods at me. And they go up and they put their order in. <laughs> And then our entire table looked at Jimmy and went, why did you congratulate that guy? And he goes, because he won. He, he got through, you know, to the next level. And we looked at him, Stefan and me, and looked at him and went, no. And Stefan goes, Jimmy, that wasn't the guy. <laughs> <laughs> so the guy... That Jimmy congratulated, probably thought Jimmy was congratulating him because he's an older man with two young women in their 20s on either arm. I honestly don't know what he thought. He didn't know me from Adam. I thought it was a mistaken identity. I thought he was, it was like, thank you. One of the guys that we knew had gotten through, you know, at the auditions. And uh, I felt like an idiot. We said it was a Jimmyism. Yeah, well, yes, that's a Jimmyism. That's what we call it. Definitely. 
So and anyway, we got to um, see a good, very good friend of mine growing up, Tommy Hellman. <coughs> Uh, he lived around that area, and he invited us over, and we got to do some things in Chicago. We went to Wrigley Field. Uh, we had French. It was winter. It was very cold outside. Oh yeah, there was McDonald's right across the street from There's Wrigley. McDonald's Field. right across the street, so we went <laughs> over there. and We had French fries and took some pictures of Wrigley Field. What did Mike say about the fries? Oh, you know what? I can't remember. It was funny. Something, something very funny. These guys were hilarious. Yeah, Marty, Mike, said, it, it, what a. It, it, it was, you know, in the progression of everything, it was the best Sidewinder band, in my experience and in my opinion, that we had ever had. Uh, uh, you know, because even the original band, it, the original band was good, uh, and we had fun, but it, it wasn't like this. Yeah, it's hard to explain. It's, it's not that it was the best band musically, necessarily. It was the connection. Of, we were talking about earlier in a previous podcast about connections with your band members. And our most recent Sidewinders, Sidewinder bands, we've had very good connections with some of the people in the band, but some not, it, I mean, and, and not that we weren't connected, but like, Everyone just really gelled in this particular time period with the band. Everyone. It was um, it was like a big party, honestly, all the time. It, it was, was a big party. Not only during gigs, practicing, but even outside of anything musical, we all got together and we, everyone in the band got together and had good times and parties and, and things like that. Um, so that's what made it really unique. Whereas the the most recent Sidewinder bands, um, it really wasn't like that. Although some of the same people in Sidewinder uh, were involved in Dream Machine, which is the band that you were involved in, and that band was kind of like in a sense where everybody got together and, and partied and outside of music as well. That was a good so, family band. But, yeah, that was. Family oriented, meaning the band was like a family. Yeah, so I mean it, the, the point is that we're making is that it's the connections that you have with people. It's, I mean, the music can be great, but not every single band has that family connection with each member all feeling the same way. We we're remiss a little bit because when we said we played that first job, the Ambridge Legion, I would say, was probably our home. Yeah. Yeah. We played there a lot. A lot. Played there a lot. And one of the things is, <clears throat> when we played that first night, after we finished, uh, <clears throat> we, we, went, we didn't tear down right away. Excuse me, I had an allergy thing going on. We didn't tear down right away, and people didn't want to leave. They just stuck around and stuck around. And they said, you know, hey, would you guys, you know, mind playing another set? We played everything we knew uh, because we'd just gotten together a few weeks before that. So uh, we talked about it. We said, yeah, sure, because it was just that kind of a band. So they passed the hat for us, and we ended up playing until like 3, 3.30 in the morning. Yeah. And we didn't have a problem ever doing that because we liked to play. Yeah. We really enjoyed playing. And we did that on a few occasions. At that same club. Yeah, even when they moved upstairs. Yeah, and a couple mm -hmm. other clubs too. Yeah. So that's, that's one nice thing about having a band like that. You know, it's like everybody kind of gets along. And there were times when uh, people, friends of ours, would come down and we would invite them to sit in. And it, it was just, it was a party. And it was fun. Yeah. It was yeah. fun. That's what a band is supposed to be. It's supposed to be fun for the band and the audience, not necessarily in that order. Yeah. Maybe it's in that order, I don't know. I was just kind of thinking about how, like with us, our duo, um, because of the way we have to do our music, we're not really going to be able to have people come and sit in, because we're doing a totally different thing. Yeah, we'll get around to that yeah. in later episodes. Yeah, we will. <clears throat> but anyway, so yeah, we won the X Factor, that was in 2000. 11. 
I don't remember. 2011, we won the X Factor. And we also we, won Best, best well, Band, that, that too. Was in 2012. That, yeah. I was just getting to that. Okay. So, because of the X Factor, that helped our reputation. We were written up in uh, the Post Gazette. Scott Tatey, who was just an amazing writer, uh, did a write up on us in the Beaver County Times. And uh, he did a really nice job on it. Thank you, Scott. Much appreciated. And uh, yeah, so, because so. of the recognition that we started getting from doing you know, something that was kind of on a national level, even though we didn't make it that far, uh, we made it far enough to talk about the experience. Uh, he he wrote that he wrote an article about us and then we started playing more and the next year 2012 we were actually voted the best band in Beaver County uh, by the Beaver County Times readers mm -hmm. so yeah. uh, best of and uh, that that really made us feel good because there are just so many good bands the following year the Clarks won it. Uh, you know, but uh, this in 2012, Sidewinder, the yeah. Sidewinder band won the Best of the Valley uh, for Best Band, and we we thank you if you voted for us. Thank you so much. It was an honor. We we really appreciate it. It, it was an honor winning, and uh, from the bottom of our hearts, you know, thank you for that honor, and thanks to the Beaver County Times too for um, doing that contest, and to Scott Tate for writing another article about us, uh, about being the best band a year later. So then, I guess, um, trying to move this along, I guess after we were together for a while, some things started happening with Mike, and Mike was the next one to leave the band, right? Yes. So Mike left the band, so that just left Marty, Stefan, Dina, and me. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were times when uh, we did put together the Dina Miller Trio, mm -hmm. which we did with Marty. <clears throat> So whenever we needed to play with Sidewinder, Stefan would uh, play with us. And if Stefan couldn't play or um, we did a, a job during the weekday or whatever, we would play with just the three of us, uh, Marty, Dina, and me. And we went out as the Dina Miller Trio. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, uh, Stefan left. And that's when we got Bob Spack in the band, right? Yes. Yes. So, a very good friend of mine, Bob Spack, who I've known since we were like 18 years old, going back that many years, he came into the band after Stefan stepped out and decided to, oh, the Hard Rock story, oh my goodness. We played the Hard Rock Cafe. Mm -hmm. Be careful. <laughs> We played the Hard Rock Cafe. <clears throat> um, it was booked for quite a while. And right before the Hard Rock Cafe, like maybe two weeks before. Well, Stefan played with us. No. No, he didn't. It was, no, it didn't. was Bob. It was, uh, it was maybe Bob. two weeks, maybe even a week before we were scheduled to play. Stefan gave us the news he was leaving yeah, the yeah. band. Yeah, right. And I said, okay, Stefan, are you going to finish out the jobs with us? And I believe his answer was, what? No. <laughs> his answer was no. He said, well, he said, I'll, 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 I, will, I will play the jobs under certain conditions. So, long story short. He left. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't, we couldn't deal with any conditions because it, it just wasn't appropriate for the timing that we yeah. were, you know, it, so we couldn't honor those conditions at the time. So he was cool with that. Oh, Bob was getting married. Bob, Bob was getting, Bob Spack was getting married. We were invited to his wedding. We're without a bass player. Oh, okay, yeah. We go yeah, to yeah. Bob's wedding, and, and I go up to Bob at, at his wedding, wedding day, mm. and um, it's, hey, Bob, um, you're interested in playing in a band. He's like, well, I just got married, probably not. And I said, well, we're we're kind of in a jam. We need a bass player for the Hard Rock Cafe. Do you think you could at least help us out for uh, maybe a month or so to fill these jobs that we have until we can find somebody else? And he said, well, let me talk to my lovely wife, and I will ask her, and uh, if it's okay with her, I'll do it. So he called us the next day and said, yes, yeah. she said it's okay, so yeah, I'll go ahead and do it. So Bob stepped in with only maybe a week's practice and did the hard rock with us and 
boy, he did an incredible job. He really did an incredible job. Well, didn't Bob play with us twice in at the Hard Rock? Because that well, picture we Yeah, we, we played have, the Hard yeah, Rock yeah. more than once. Sure. Right. And then yeah. he played with us again at another time. But I think that this would be a good time to like wrap this section up because yeah, we're already like forty five minutes in or so. We're into so. Uh, yeah, we're we'll pick it up with Bob Spack coming into the band and the Hard Rock gigs <clears throat> and uh, some things like that. But okay, uh, I, I'll tell you, God bless every everybody that's been a member of this band and the experiences we appreciate more than we we can ever tell you all of you yes uh it, it i got to put some kind of a graph together of all the people that have been in this band <clears throat> seriously over a 30 year period it, it's just it's crazy you can't just be like the rolling stones and have the same members all the time right <laughs> Got to break things up a little bit so the next podcast then we'll talk about bob spack bob. and uh maybe we'll get into a little bit about tommy yeah and, uh, yeah, we'll just, so it'll be Marty, Tommy, Bob, you and me, right? Uh, yeah. And then David Cipriani, I think, might be in there. Yeah, he was in point. one of them with Bob, I think, <clears throat> It's too. a hard rock. <clears throat> um, yeah. But that's what we'll pick I it up next time. Wasn't David... Wasn't David at the... David was at the first Hard Rock show with us, right? No. Oh, okay. I don't know. It's no. there's so much, you guys. It's there, just... There's a lot. Yeah, we we really should have kept the diary. <sighs> anyway, Anyhow. thank you for uh, tuning in. Please hit the like bell wherever it is. Yeah. So over there. In closing, thank you. Subscribe for your to time. our channel. Thank you for your time. We appreciate you. Um, we hope that you'll take a look at our Patreon page. We'll leave the link below so that you can um, join our fan club over there. You get more exclusive information and things that are going on um, on the Patreon fan club kind of page. Um, we're going to be growing that as well and putting a lot of exclusive content on there for you. There's two different levels. There's a $3 level and a $5 level, which is very affordable. If I could tell you some of the stories that Dina won't let me tell you, believe me, it'll be worth it. Yeah, we could share, <laughs> we could share those on the Patreon I, well, page. I don't know if we can or not. But, um, maybe. Yeah, we'll see. If it's not a lawsuit waiting to happen. There's other things, though, that we'll put on there that you guys would really enjoy. Oh, yes. Some things are left better unsaid. Thank you for being with us. So we love you guys so much, and we appreciate your time, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in the next podcast. Uh, we wish you so much love. Many blessings. If somebody just wanted to leave us a tip, are they allowed to do that? Uh, oh, yeah, I was going to say, we have a virtual tip jar. So all you need to do is go to paypal.me slash pnlmedia, and you can leave us a virtual tip if you like what we're doing and you want to um, help support us in that way since we haven't been able to actually go out and put a real live tip jar in front of you because uh, we haven't been able to with the pandemic play music out in public we would love um, any of your loving and heartfelt donations they'd really be greatly appreciated so we'll leave that link below as well as the patreon link and um, also our to our Facebook page so Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. Stay safe. Love you guys. Bye.